black sheep have gone astray. Everybody wants to go their own way. But Jesus knows our every move. And he came to rescue me and you. Our God proves his love for
going to turn to page 390 in the songbooks, to page 390, Power in the Blood. We'll ask all those who are able to stand. see you all in the house of the Lord. We've just come through a, a tremendous week of Bible school. We've had fun. We've learned a lot. And we have uh, eaten more than we should. We've had crafts. We've had just a little bit of everything. And God has blessed every single moment of it. And if you weren't able to be here, I trust and pray that if you're in that age group or you want to help in Bible school, You'll mark your calendars for next year and uh, come be with us. Linda's not able to be with us this morning, so let me share quickly some announcements. Uh, as you, most of you know, we don't take an offering here any longer. There's boxes at each uh, exit door that you can put your tithes, offerings, and mission gifts there. If you're a first-time visitor with us and you did not fill out a, a um, visitor form, I would encourage you to do so. We won't hassle you. We won't bother you. I'd just like to send you a note uh, thanking you for being with us. Uh, there's a picnic. How many are looking forward to the picnic today after church? Wow, we're going to have a lot of food left over if I just 10 or 12 people looking forward to it. Now you say, well, I didn't bring anything. You didn't have to. It's all provided for you back there. And I think we're having sandwiches, subs, and chips and all that sort of thing. And they've got some bouncy stuff out back. Now it's just for the kids. No evening service tonight. And then Thursday of this week at 9 a.m. at Farmer's Cafe in Carlton is our men's breakfast. So if you would like to join us for that, you're more than welcome. Uh, Joy, just over older youth are having a picnic this coming Saturday. What time is that, by the way? Noon? Noon at Lake Erie Metro Park. Bring a lounge chair, some games, and a dish to pass. And if you have not paid for the Ark Encounter and the Creation Museum, if you're planning on going on that trip, you need to get your funds into Kim uh, immediately, if you would. Thank you for being here. We trust and pray that today will be a blessing for you, and I hope to see you all down there where I can personally greet you.
I can do that. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the privilege that we have today. Thank you for these children who have given of their week to center their minds and hearts around you. And thank you for everyone that made this Bible school possible. It has touched the lives of our children. We don't know what kind of seeds were planted. We don't know what fruition will come from that. But we're trusting you, Lord Jesus, to work in their lives, to become a reality, and to give them strength in every day. Bless the remaining of this service. May it bring honor and glory to you. We ask it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. may be seated. And the little ones are going to join the choir for praise and worship songs. You'll have to stand for that when we sing the praise and they get up.
it was a great week. And we want to just share just a little bit of that. So I just sent, um, I need all my rotation captains. I just want you to see how many people, come on, come on, don't let me stand here by myself. Uh, how many people it took, come on up, come on up real quick, real quick, all you folks, uh, Mr. Perkins, come on. Come on, yeah, come on, real quick. We just want you to see, this is not even, I don't believe, we had 45 workers, volunteers this week. And Mr. Fritz, he's back there, Todd's back there. People that came out for one purpose, to share the good news of Jesus Christ to these children. And I just wanted them to share just a little bit. By the way, if I didn't say, my name's Andrea Thomas, and I was not in charge. <laughs> I was supposed to be. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Um, these people just came out to honor the Lord, and it was a privilege. I asked each one of them just to say a couple things. I'm going to start off with our missions captain, Mr. Weaver. I never say a couple of things. <laughs> it was a pleasure working with your children this week, really a blessing. We talked about two different missionaries, one across the sea in Poland. Those are the Hescu families. And he actually, he was a football coach, basketball coach and all. But the amazing thing about that family is they shared the gospel in Poland. They left and went to Poland. And they had telling children of three different things, actually to love Jesus, love others, and then share the gospel. And then we had another group, which was in, actually in Baltimore, Maryland. And this is a group who was actually started a church there and started working with young men. And what they did there, they had flag football. But every time before a game, they made them memorize verses, which they had a game plan, but most important, they told them the plan is from the word. And your children to deal with them, I told them God has a plan for each and every one of them. And their duty also as missionaries is to share the word here in the United States. And they were great with it. They were very wonderful. And I really appreciate you and your children being there. Last but not least, we had goals set. And we had competition, boys against girls. And whoever lost, the leader had to go to the tank. I had to go to the dunk tank because the guys lost. But I loved it because kids were loving throwing the balls. So. But the great thing about that was we, I was been communicating back and forth with our missionaries. Our missionaries, I said, how much do you need for this? We had missionaries saying, well, we need $250 for flood damage. We need $400 for medical expenses. That's $650, right? When we got to Thursday, we had like $350. I said, I was kind of like, oh, me of little faith. You know how much we got in Friday? $653. $3 over. So we God is faithful. Uh, we had our craft people. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, said to keep this short. But it took, it, we started a long time ago getting the crafts organized and stuff, and it took every single solitary person that worked in it. And there were five of us in there. It was Bonnie Daniels, and it was Bill and Liz Musham, and it was Todd Daniels, and Todd isn't here today. We could not have done it without everybody and my name is Linda Campbell and we it took all five of us to do it and it was wonderful the kids the behaviors we could not have asked for better children the crafts had something to do with the projects the, the lessons for the day and we were able to talk to them about that and um, they were so good and we have been so blessed and there were no big eyes no little U's. it took everybody Nobody was the best and nobody was the leader. We were all the leaders. So they just said, you're the talker, you can do that. So that's put, put me here. But, but it took every solid single chair, everybody to do it. And we've got our snack people. These, these people were very Well, nobody went hungry this week. We had lots of food. Everybody was fed very well. We had Terry on the grill, and we had Debbie and Vicki, my mom. They were working hard, and David was our vacuumer. He vacuumed under every crumb and everything they left this week. He did a great job. And we also had a hot dog eating contest, 
and Bill Musham and David won hands down. <laughs> Are you talking? And then we have the people keeping everybody on track and counting and sending messages. And I'm going to let Stacy Gregg tell a little bit about that. Um, I just want to let you know we had a total of, I believe, 65 kids come out for Bible school. And it was wonderful watching the numbers grow. And I want to thank Jessica and Cheryl, who couldn't be with us. Um, and it was, it was just a blast. And Rosie, Rosie helped. And... We just, we had a great time. And we had our nursery, <laughs> and she's not saying anything, but they, <laughs> she and Linda Earl, who's back here, let's see, and we had song and worship. So after our mission, Bob would always say, are you ready to dance? And I'd be like, uh, uh-huh. So... I was on the dance team. I had Lindsay. Lindsay was my, she's not here this morning. She's at church camp. And Ethan and Nick, they were my little dance crew. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. And it was so fun, though, to, to worship and, and praise God in, in song um, and in dance. Uh, that was a blessing. Yes. Okay. That's all I got to say. Next. And we had our adult Sunday school, or adult VBS class. Sure, just say something. Okay, my wife had the youngest group, and I had the oldest group. <laughs> Does that say anything? And then we had our youth. And I'm telling you, what a blessing to have these college kids give of themselves for a week and come and not complain and play and be selfless, it blessed my heart. So these two fellas were in charge of rec, and uh, they were the ones getting everybody wild and sending them on. So... <laughs> So this week we had a lot of fun planning out the games and playing with the kids. We had a pretty easy job, but it was hard to come up with games that went with the lesson every day. But Lifeway had them already planned out for us, so that, that worked out pretty good. We didn't have to do a lot of thinking. We just got to play around. And then Friday we ended it off with water balloons and had a big water balloon fight. And each day we talked to the kids about their verse and the point of the day and just gave them little lessons about God before and after we played the game. So they got to think about it before the game, during the game, and after the game. It was fun. All right. So I just, it, these people have encouraged me all through the year, and I knew they would bless your hearts. So we, and Miss Katie Hopper sitting back there, I'm looking at her eyes. She was, she helped me get the promotion going too. So I just appreciated them and wanted them each to just tell you a little bit about their week. So we appreciate you all. And Miss Juanita, I just looked at her. Our verse. All the kids, they couldn't wait to get to Miss Judy and Miss Juanita. <laughs> Hi, I wanted to leave her. And uh, Judy Osborne and I were listening to the children say their memory verses. They did a great job. They practiced really hard on their verses. And they said it very well. And they had a reward. They got lots of candy because they said their verses very well. <laughs> and I just want to thank you, parents, for allowing your children to come to Vacation Bible School. Thank you so much. And I love these kids. <laughs> we had a great time. Thank you. And now we've got our kids coming up. So each class is going to come up and just share a little bit. Uh, and we're going to start with our oldest group, Chevy Hoppert. Come on up. Chevy and Todd worked with our senior high. And we don't have many this morning. But she'll, Chevy will share. Chevy will tell you about it. I'm Chevy. Um, Todd's in the hall somewhere. 
Um, we had the teens, and although we're dwindled in numbers today, some are sick, some have sports. Um, Nick? Yeah. We have two today. Um, we actually had eight to 11 kids every single night. So we had a really good number. Um, they kind of varied in between like when their sports would allow them to. Um, I think that's great numbers because these are kids that have jobs, they have sports, um, and they just really blessed me. And I'm not gonna get emotional. But thank you for bringing your children. Did they get some food or anything? No. Okay. They, my own son was in that class, and he's 14, and he couldn't wait to get. Um, we've got, come on up, our next class, seventh and eighth graders. Another bunch of fun kids. And they're going to share something with you this morning. Come on up. Well, this was a great group of kids this year. Um, I had Mike uh, Perkins help me out uh, this year, and it was just a, a joy to have them. But I will say that candy does work. Uh, I used probably a, a half a jar of candy uh, with the group this year, but it was awesome. What they would like to do is, is the points of the day uh, match the, the plan of salvation. And the, the kids here this morning would like to take turns on reading one step of that plan. And there was five steps. So, Jay, you want to start? God's power. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Romans 1, 6. God is the power source in reward in the reward in of salvation because we are powerless in our sin god steps in to rescue us our problem for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god romans 3:23 sin means the missing mark and falling short of perfection because of our imperfection we cannot stand before a holy god our punishment for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ, Jesus our Lord. Romans 6, verse 23. Sin separates us from God and sentences us to death. God's provision. But God pro pro pros his love for us in that while we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Though we deserved eternal life, God has made a way for us to be rescued through the sacrifice of Son, Jesus. God's promise, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Lord and believe in your heart that Jesus raised him from the dead, you will, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. To confess Jesus as Lord means we agree with God about our sins and need for salvation. We, we must repent and trust only in the work of Jesus to save us. Thank you. All right, fifth and sixth grade class and third and fourth grade class, come on up. Oh, I'm going to die. That's right. Stay. Yeah, stay. We're supposed to stay. Just go right in front of them. Thank you. All right, my name is Donna, and my helper, I was a teacher of the third and fourth graders, and this is Pat, she was our helper. And we had three to four children all week, they were wonderful. We have two with us this morning. And to my right is Julie, she was the teacher of the fifth and sixth graders, and her helper Haley is to her right. Our children today want to tell you the ABCs of salvation. A is for... Admit you are a sinner. B is for? Believe. Believe that Jesus is God's son and receive his gift. And C is for? Confess. Confess. Confess your faith in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And thank you. Thanks for letting your kids come. We had a really great week. 
in our first and second grade class. Come on up. Oh, boy. <laughs> So we had the first and second graders. Jamie was the teacher and I was the helper. Um, we averaged between, I think it was eight and 10 kids every night. They were a blast. They all pretty much behaved and couldn't wait to get down there and tell their verses <laughs> so they could get their candy. But um, we did something a little different. We uh, made up a little video so they didn't have to talk in front of everybody. Um, about why God is their champion. Jamie, Jamie, can you walk them up here so little kids can come up? Okay. All right, and last but not least, we have our pre-K and kindergarten class. Oh, wow. They have had so much energy and brought so much excitement. One day I came in here and had to rescue Mr. Weaver because <laughs> <laughs> because of their excitement, they have had such a good time. My name is Callista, and I worked with the pre-K and kindergarten class along with Miss Kathy this week. And the kids were awesome. They kept us on our toes all week. They kept us busy. Um, they had a lot of fun, and they learned a lot about Jesus. But... Um, they did a great job remembering their memory verse this week, and so that's what we wanted to share with all of you. like, can you take them back over there? Yeah. We would like them to share their theme song with you. Come on up.
Okay, kids, you can head to Children's Church. Thank you so much. What a blessed week we have had in Bible school. Uh, can you hear me okay? That game on, could you cue that back up? Yeah. Your turn. Everybody 21 years old and older, would you stand up? <laughs> Come on. That's enough. Stand out. Well, that took care of that real fast, didn't it? <laughs> and I don't have any candy. But I do want to share something with you very, very briefly uh, from the Word of God. It has been such a great privilege for me. I didn't do a whole lot in Bible school, um, but I wanted to be here each night so I could meet these young people, I could interact with them. I could cut up with them a little bit uh, so that when they listen on Sunday, I'm not a stranger to them. And I want to thank you parents and your grandparents for the privilege that you have given Lakeside Church this past week to share with your children the preciousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and folks don't like to be recognized. I, I understand that. And she's not in here, I don't think. But this could not have taken place without Andrea Thomas. And I want you to know that. Um, she has organized this. She has directed this. She has done everything to pull this all together. And I think it would be in order that we thank her. There's a scripture in the Bible, and it may sound strange to you this morning, but the message that I want to share with you is geared not so much to the young people, though I think it has an effect on everyone, but a message to you as a parent. If I were to ask you, and I don't want to see your hands raised because I know everybody will raise their hand in answer to this question, but I want you to really truly consider this for just a moment. Do you want your children to go to heaven? Now, I'm assuming that the answer to that is yes. We all want the best for our children. And in order for us to give them the best, we have to give God our best. And if we will do that, God will honor a parent who is devoted to him and is desiring that his life interact with lives of children. There have been seeds that have been planted here this week in the minds and in the hearts of your children. And if you will carry through with that, whether it's here at Lakeside or elsewhere, um, but if you'll carry through with that and have your children in church, have your children in Sunday school, we have one of the best, if not the best, teen program that there is around this area. And I would strongly encourage you uh, to bring them. We have uh, some that have just graduated from high school who are formed a group, and, and they're a vital part of this congregation. But I want to share with you a scripture that's found, you don't need to turn there and you don't need to stand, I'm not gonna read anything. But this, if you wanna read this later when you get home, this is found in 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, and it's about a Shunammite woman. And the Bible tells us that this woman and her husband entertained a prophet of God by the name of Elisha. And every time Elisha would come into the area, they would recognize that. 
And so they decided on one occasion, let's build a little place for Elisha so that when he's here, he'll have a place to stay. And they did so. And so when Elisha had made numerous visits to that area, he had somewhere that he could stay because somebody cared about him. And if you'll stop and think about this, in, in a few verses later, the Bible said that Elisha had a servant by the name of Gehazi. And he said to Gehazi, what can we do in return for this Shunammite woman's uh, love and for her graciousness that she shared toward us? What can we do for her? And Gehazi said, she doesn't have any children. And so Elisha calls her to himself, and he said, about this time next year, you're going to have a child. And she said, well, uh, evidently that wasn't possible. She didn't think of her life. Maybe she was too old. The Bible doesn't say. Maybe she was past childbearing years. The Bible doesn't say. But she said, I, I don't know how that's going to be, but it came to pass that she had a child. And the Bible said that that child spent some time around her. I imagine that that child learned from its mother. That child probably learned how to clean the house, how to cook, how to bake, how to do various things. Mom, it's important that your children learn about Jesus, not just from church, but from you. And then... The Bible said it came on a day. In other words, this boy was old enough that it was time to leave the house and go out to the field where his father was. And when he got out to the field where his father was, the scripture said that he grabbed his head and he cried out, my head, my head. And the father had wisdom enough to say, take him to his mother. They took the child to its mother and if you could get the picture for just a moment, this child is sitting on his mother's knee and the sun is as high as it can get that day. It's at high noon. And all of a sudden, this child dies. I'm going to say something to you that may sound very strange to you, but my prayer, parents, is for your children to die so that they might live. I don't want them to die physically, but they must die spiritually. In other words, what I mean by that is they must understand that there's a need in their life to be saved, to be forgiven of sin by Jesus Christ. And so when that child died at high noon, the first thing they do is take it to his mother, but listen to what the mother did. She took this lifeless body of this child who was her life, who she loved. She had given birth to him. She had raised him. She lays him on the bed in that house that she had built for the prophet. And then she says, I want my servant to come and saddle an ass. And I'm going to drive as fast as I can possibly get there. And I'm going to where the man of God was, Elisha. Now, if you could somehow think about this, if you are a parent here today, the most important thing you can do is to take yourself, first of all, to Jesus. If you've never accepted him as your personal savior, that's the greatest decision that you'll ever make in life. It not only gives you access to heaven, but it gives heaven access to you while you live here on earth. And so in the midst of all of that, she takes off. She lays her child on the bed and she takes off to find the man of God. And she tells her servant, don't slow down unless I tell you to. Get me there as fast as you can. And when she gets there, she's greeted by three sentences. Is it well with you? Are you okay? He's asking, why have you come? Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? And is it well with the child? And here's her response. It's well. 
Now, that wouldn't have been my response. I would have said, I have come to you as fast as I can get here. My child has died. You prayed, and God gave us a child, and you told us that was going to happen, but the child is dead, and I need somebody to help me. I don't know which way to turn. That's not what she said. She said, it's okay. Do you know why she had the faith to believe it was okay? Because she knew if she could get to that man of God and he could get that man of God to her son, her son would live again. And parents, I'm telling you, if you'll get yourself to the Lord, you can bring the Lord to your children. And when you bring the Lord to your children, I'm telling you there's no greater joy than knowing that you and your household are saved and sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit and that one day when this life is over, and it's going to be over for all of us, one day when this is over, life really begins because we get to go where Jesus is. And so I want you to get the picture here. She's got a child at home that's dead. She's at the man of God's presence. And the man of God sends Gehazi, his servant, ahead of him. But you know what the woman did, the mother? She got down on her knees. And she put her arms around the legs of Elisha. And she said, I will not let you go until you come with me. If every one of us as a parent would have that kind of attitude in our lives... I am coming to God with my life. And I am not going to let go. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to uh, uh, do anything that would hinder my child from coming to know Jesus Christ. I'm not going to let you go until you come with me. And he came with her. If you've got that kind of attitude, I'll tell you what God will do. I can't promise you God will save your children. Because they have a choice in the matter. But I can promise you this, the Holy Spirit of God will touch their hearts to help them understand they need to come to Jesus. And so she brings the man of God back to this house, and he climbs the steps, I suppose, and he gets to where this child is. Now, I want you to picture this child laying on his back with his arms probably out like this, and his eyes closed, and there's no breath at all in this child. And the servant of God puts himself in the same position of that child. He puts his eyes to his eyes. He puts his mouth to his mouth. Puts his hands to his hands. So if you could picture the child laying like this, and then the prophet of God gets on him and, and assumes the same position that child is in. That's exactly what Jesus Christ did. Because, you see, he assumed our position. Sin caused us to be separated from God. Sin caused us to be in a place where we have no access to God. Sin brought us to that place where we realize that sin has put a gap between us and God. I usually say it this way. Watch me very closely. If this is God and this is us, when we're born, we are in innocency. You've got some of these little children that stood up here today. They're not accountable right now for sin. They don't understand about it. But some of them that stood up there are. And, and you are. Because you know right from wrong. And you're accountable. But before that happens, they're in safety. Because they're not accountable to sin. But just as soon as they realize that they've sinned against God, watch what happens. Sin separates them. Now I want you to watch my hands very closely for those of you who've never seen me do this before. God, the individual. When sin separates, the individual is drawn away from God. God never moves. God never changes. God's the same yesterday, today, forever, and always shall be and will be. God never changes, but sin separates us. And we can do everything we possibly can do to bring ourselves back to God. But it's not good enough. 
You can't be moral enough. You can't be good enough. You can't be religious enough. You could come to this church and you could allow me to baptize you so many times that you're waterlogged. But that won't get you back to God. Morals won't get you back to God. Good intentions won't get you back to God. But here's what Jesus did when he positioned himself like us. Jesus is God. And so he comes as God. But he also came as a man. But the difference between him and us is he was a man that never sinned. So you have sinless man and almighty God in one person. And it's just as soon as you or your children believe that Jesus Christ came, died on a cross to take our place so that we would not have to meet eternal death. He died for us. And as soon as they believe that, Jesus takes them or you and brings us back to God the Father. And there's a relationship established. We are saved. We are born again. Whatever terminology you want to use, you're with the Lord. And you have a promise of heaven one day. So I want to ask you a question. The Bible said when Elijah, Elisha laid on that child, the Bible said that the body of the child waxed warm. Wax means it grew. It got warmer. Now when the child died, when any person dies, eventually your body gets cooled. But now... There's a sign of life. And you know what Elisha did when there was a sign of life? That mother was down at the bottom of the stairs. I don't believe she was cooking. I don't believe she was cleaning. I don't believe she was doing any tasks. I believe she was in prayer down there. God, bring life back to my child. And Elisha goes back downstairs. And he tells her, that there's a sign of life. And I believe that she with all of her heart said, go back up there and do whatever you've got to do. I believe that you can bring life to my child. And when he went back up and he assumed that position again, the Bible said the child sneezed seven times. Now that's a sign of perfection. I don't want to go into all that. I can't develop that for you. But that to me says sin came out. So here's what I want to end with right now. You're here today, and you enjoyed sending your children to Bible school. You enjoyed seeing them stand up here. You got, you got thrilled, you, and you should. That was thrilling what we saw today. But the most important thing you can do for your children is to bring them to Jesus. And the only way you can do that is that you first, yourself, must come to Jesus. And so while we stand right now and get a one verse, one verse of a song, short, I'm going to ask you to take a step that probably will be the hardest step you've ever taken in your life. Because what you're going to say right now, I'm going to ask you to come and pray and invite Christ into your heart. And I know what some of you will think because I know how Satan works. He will say, well... You don't want to go down there. What are those people going to think? You don't want to go down there. Why? Now, that's embarrassing. You don't want to go down there. Let me tell you something. If your child were laying, dying or dead, you wouldn't care what anybody else thought. You wouldn't care. And some of these precious children up here are alive physically, but they need Jesus in their lives. And they need us. They don't just need you, you as parents. They need me. They need church. They need God's people. All of those people, some 40 of them, I believe she said, that had volunteered this week. We don't pay people to do this sort of stuff. Everybody does this out of the kindness of their heart. First of all, toward Almighty God in thanksgiving for what he's done in their lives. And then they do it because they love your children and they love you. Let me ask you something today. I started with a question and I'll end with the same one. How many of you want your children to go to heaven? You know something? You need to lead them there. Yesterday, my family had a family reunion. And uh, I had a, 
uh, I'm a Diet Coke fella, and I'd emptied out one of those plastic bottles of Diet Coke, put the top back on it. One of my grandsons was sitting next to me, and he was horsing around a little bit. And I took that pop bottle, and I hit him a couple times right there, just, just kind of flicked my wrist. And he looked up at me, and he tried to get the bottle. And I said, no, you can't have the bottle. You can't do that. He said, oh, yes, I can. You just did. They look at us. You want me to come to Jesus? Mom, Dad, have you come to Jesus? Have you accepted him into your life? That's how you win your children. And this is not about embarrassment and any of that sort of stuff. This is about a decision that's life-altering, life-changing in your life and in the life, perhaps, of your children. So I want you to bow your heads with me for just a moment. Several of you have never been here during a time like this, and I, I want to assure you of something. I will not point you out. I will not come to you. I will not catch you afterward. I'll not get you when you go down there to eat. I simply want to be able right at this moment to pray for you. And I want to look to my far left to start because I can't see every section all at one time. So to my far left, your far right, how many of you today would look at me and say, Pastor, I need Christ as my Savior. Is there anybody in that section that would say that? I need him as my Savior. How about to my immediate left? The same question. I need him as my Savior. To my immediate right, the same question. I've never been saved, preacher. God bless you. Who else? Anybody else? I, now, I'm not going to, all you got to do is look at me. You don't have to raise your hand. You don't have to make a ruffle for people here. Just look at me because I want to pray for you. And I'm not going to pray for you by recognizing you. I just want to pray in my heart. And how about to my far right? You'd look at me and say, pray for me, preacher. Pray for me. Pray for me. You can lift your heads. Thank you so much for that. They're going to sing a verse of song. I'd be honored to pray with you if you'd come. What do I do when I come down there, preacher? I don't have the words for you for that. I don't know. All I know is if you'll humble your heart before the Lord, God will know that. And if you'll ask him to come into your life, God will do that. And God will be the best friend you've ever had in your life. While we sing one verse, one verse. Will you come? Can I invite you today? That's how the Lord wants you, just like you are. to dismission I would encourage every single one of you to join us down there for picnic lunch to enjoy yourselves together if perhaps you have any questions about what I've said I'd be honored to talk to you about it down there make an appointment go off somewhere one of the rooms and talk anything you'd like to do I'm available to you may God richly bless you let me say one more time to parents grandparents thank you for entrusting to us your most precious gift, and that's your children. And we trust and pray that this week we have shared with them what will be life-changing for them at some point in their lives. God bless you. You're at liberty to go.